Me and three other game dev YouTubers were challenged to make a game in only 48 hours with the theme The Devil's Price. And we've even got Vimlark, Nate Dev, and Mystery as the judges. The only problem is I've been very busy and I kind of left this until the last minute so I actually only have about 12 hours to make an entire working game. Not only that, but this is the progressive game jam, meaning that there's going to be multiple rounds which build on top of this game. So if I lose in this round, I'm going to be out of the entire competition. This was my most difficult and stressful challenge yet. Obviously, before I make the game, I need to know what I'm going to make. I think the theme is really interesting and it immediately made me think of a decent idea that fits its meaning. Basically, you have a player in the middle and they can have a gun and he can shoot in every direction and then there's enemies coming this way and every direction. So yeah, it's like a top-down shooter. And then once you reach a certain goal, like 10 enemies, let's say, you will have to buy an upgrade and then the upgrade will give you something good but also something equally bad. Let's see how this turns out and if I'll even be able to finish it. I quickly started off by creating the player, which for now is just a circle with a rectangle sticking out for a gun. I wrote some code to make the player look at your mouse and uh, after a few attempts it worked nicely. I then made the player shoot bullets, but obviously there's nothing to shoot yet, so I started work on some enemies. I created a hexagon, which I promise will look better later, and made it always look towards the player. But this looked weird because it was doing it in 3D, not 2D, so I used the same method to rotate them that I used for the player and the mouse, and after making them move towards the player as well, everything was working. I then added a collider to the enemy and made it lose health when it collides with the player bullet. Pretty cool. Getting all this done in less than an hour actually made me feel really efficient at working and confident that I could finish the game in time, but this feeling didn't last for long. I knew not everything would be this easy. I now had to turn all of these main mechanics into a playable game loop, which you can, you know, actually play. So I needed to spawn some enemies over time during the game. I thought this would just take a couple of minutes, but it ended up taking over an hour and a half. What I had trouble with was spawning the enemies just outside the camera so you can't see them appearing. I did the most stupid things to try and do this, like spawning them near the center and pushing them out a little until they're outside the camera. But eventually I went with one of the easiest options, just choosing a random spawn position on a random side of the camera. And this worked the best so far, so I kept it. I implemented this spawning into a wave system, which honestly I did use a tutorial for, and now the game can kind of be played without it just suddenly ending. This single enemy type that you have to kill is a bit boring, so I made two new enemies. One which is faster, and one which is slower but has more health. And this made the waves way more fun and more varied. Okay, now it's time for what will make this game unique, and well, will actually fit the theme. I need to make the upgrades. When working on upgrades in games in the past, I've used some of the most inefficient and non-reusable methods possible, but this time I want to change that. I'm going to attempt to make an upgrade system which makes use of Unity's scriptable objects. Are they the right thing to use? I don't know, and to be honest, I'm not even sure what they are. After countless tutorials and trying to figure out just what scriptable objects are, and how I can use them, I eventually was able to get something that kind of worked. And here it is. After each wave, you basically just have to choose between two choices which both have a positive and negative change, but with the negative hidden, making for some interesting gameplay. I've used scriptable objects here to basically store upgrades, their description and what they will do, allowing me to randomly select some for each of the choices. I made some user friendliness changes to this and added some extra visual feedback, and now it's pretty fun and easier to understand what's happening. Do you know what else would be pretty fun though? Well, liking the video, because this challenge only got more stressful. Even though I had just made a bunch of progress on the upgrades, it still took three whole hours, and I was really stressed about not finishing this game in time, since I don't know if you've noticed this, but this game looks kinda terrible right now. I needed to finally get rid of these awful sprites and background, and well, make the game look actually good. To keep it a consistent theme between sprites, I used this color palette generator to get me some nice colors that go together. I used this blue color to make a cool background design, and used this nice yellow color to make an interesting looking triangle player sprite, which apparently has a gun built into its head. Finally, I made art for the three different enemies using the remaining colors and added some post-processing, and now the game looked decent. But it's still not very satisfying and I really don't have much time left. Like I literally only have 2 hours left and I've still got so much to do. 
With so little time left, the game still needed to feel fun and impactful to play. It needed animation, sound, screen shake, and so much more, so I added those things, which took a couple of hours. And what a surprise, they really do improve the experience by a really large amount. With only a few minutes left, I was really worried I wouldn't be able to finish. But luckily, I quickly downloaded some groovy music for the game, put it in, and exported the game to send off to the judges. I never thought this was going to be possible, but I had finished the game. On time. And it's not completely terrible. I don't have the results for the game gem or ratings yet, but when they're announced in a few days, I'll put them in the comments. I'm not sure how confident I am after seeing some of the other entries though. In the meantime, go watch this video.